What's up guys, it's Jack. I'm back with another video and today I'm going to be talking about how to create the perfect USB-C setup. It feels like the era of USB-C is upon us and with the release of Apple's new MacBook Pro, there's been a lot of attention around their decision to move to the new standard. The challenges with the new MacBook Pro have been well documented, but for this video, I wanted to see if you could really build a great, everyday, all USB-C setup. I think for a lot of us who create videos or do work with photos or other basically large files, coming up with a good external storage solution is one of the first priorities when we get a new laptop. I did some thinking and research on what the right setup would be and came to the conclusion that I wanted to get a fast external SSD for the files that I'm currently working on and then a slower mechanical drive with more storage to use as kind of an archive and database for all my older files. I got the Samsung T3 1TB SSD external drive and the Lacie 4TB external drive which I use as my archive. So far I've really been happy with both of the drives. There's not a ton of USB-C drives on the market right now, but as far as what's available I think this is a really good combo. If you're traveling a lot, the next thing you need is good audio. So I wanted to find one of the best but portable USB-C Bluetooth speakers that are available right now. I went with the Bang & Olufsen BioPlay A1. This is a great Bluetooth speaker and I like it a lot because it combines a high build quality with a portable form factor and pretty decent sound for the size. Bang & Olufsen does a really good job of meshing aesthetics with durability and they always seem to put a lot of attention into little details on the product that a lot of manufacturers don't seem to bother with these days. So now you got your storage taken care of, you got your speaker, and it's time to talk about the phone. The best USB-C phone right now, in my opinion, is hands down the Pixel. The Pixel XL is a great phone, the camera is unbelievable, and it's just a really high quality, well-made product, and I don't think you can go wrong with it. The pure Android experience is really nice, and Google has done a good job of pushing out new updates and improvements to the phone constantly to make it even better. One of the biggest drawbacks to the Pixel is that it's not waterproof, so if you're going on a trip or on vacation and you want to document some of your adventures, I think you got to get a camera that can stand up to the elements. If you're going with USB-C, I think the GoPro Hero 5 is the clear choice. It's a pretty good action camera, and it's got a lot of convenient features like the touchscreen and the built-in waterproof housing. I don't really use a tablet too much day-to-day, -day, but it's nice to have one when traveling. As far as the USB-C models available right now, I think the best one is probably the Google Pixel C. I really think this is a great tablet that seems to have been kind of overlooked when it came out. Google definitely put a lot of attention in design of the tablet, and it has a lot of features and little things on it that are pretty cool, like the light bar on the back, which lights up when you turn it on, and it can display different things like the battery status or the Google logo. I mean, it's not like a super useful feature or anything, but it's pretty cool and definitely sets it apart from the crowd. As far as specs, it has a 10.2 inch display. It also has a quad core NVIDIA processor in it, which is definitely really fast. Since it's a Pixel device, it runs pure Android, so it gets constant updates from Google. And I've had it for maybe about a year now or six months, and it's still receiving regular updates, so that's impressive. Last but not least in the USB-C lineup is my 15-inch MacBook Pro. This is uh, the new model. I did a review on it, which I'll link here, so I won't go in into a ton of detail. But so far, I've been happy with it. There have been a lot of videos made, um, even by myself, showing the mess of wires and adapters and cables and stuff that you would need if you got the new MacBook Pro. But the cool thing is going with USB-C and kind of committing to this type of setup, it's actually the exact opposite. You can use all these devices, you could charge them, you can connect them, you can power them with basically one power brick and one cable. So I packed it all up in my backpack to kind of show how easy it is and how little room it would really take to use all USB-C devices. And I think when, when you kind of do this and get a look at how it all works, you can see what the point of and what the positives are of going to all USB-C because it really is a universal standard that all of these devices can use. Not all the manufacturers are there yet, and there's not a huge selection of USB-C devices across the board, but there still are some good options out there, and I think once Apple decides to finally make the iPhone USB-C and move the iPad and all their devices over to USB-C, and more manufacturers adopt the standard, I think it's going to be a really cool thing, and overall in the long run, a much more convenient system than the one that we have now. If you liked the video, please subscribe to my channel, I'll be putting out videos every Tuesday. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.